My name's Derek Knight. Uh, I've been training dogs now for, oh, well, I've been in the game for sort of 50 years, I suppose it is now. Started in 1966, left home and went to work uh, in a place called Norfor, Potter's Bar, uh, just north of London. I was told by one of the trainers in London at the kennels I was working that no matter where it is, you've got to get the trainer's license. Uh, if it's Timbuktu, take it. And I really, genuinely didn't really know where the place was. And they said, you know, vacancies come up in Shawfield. So I went up there and became a trainer in Glasgow at Shawfield, where I was for three years. I came down here in 1977. Um, and uh, I've been here ever since. We get in at quarter past six and staff get in the same sort of time. And it's having the dogs all out, cleaning all the beds out disinfecting, washing them out, getting them all out to about nine o'clock and then we feed them. Uh, and that's why they're a bit quieter. It's like madhouse in here. If you came in here at half past six in the morning, or they just go mental. Um, but yeah, have them out and then feed. Groom them, we'd be grooming now, putting them back out again. They go out four or five times a day. Uh, and then depends on what sort of whether we're racing or not, what time we sort of lock up and go home. But it's a long, on a race day, we say quarter past six in the morning and the kids would come back here and not leave here till half past 11 at night. So it's a pretty long day. And if you go racing up, you might go to like Manchester or somewhere and then come back and get here at two o'clock, get home and come back again at quarter past six in the morning. It's, it's uh, for the love of it, not the money. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. I think most greyhound trainers do love the dogs. There's some that I think, uh, there's some I've never really seen making a fuss of a dog, which is terrible because, you know, they're your living, you live with them, um, they're your bread and butter, and every time a greyhound races, there's always a possibility of it getting injured. You know, I mean, it doesn't happen a great deal, but it does happen. And, uh, you know, they're, they're running in a way, they're running their lives out for you, you could say. You know, they deserve to be done. You know, it's easy to say, oh, you know, the dog's, the dog's injured and that's it. It's not going to run again. It's going to have to be put to sleep. But we don't do it. We don't do it. Unless it's a real, it, occasionally, probably in the last 10 years, we may have had two dogs put to sleep because the injury was so bad that it couldn't be repaired. We're lucky that we've got nice owners. We've got some owners that have got, you know, three, four dogs at home that they've taken home. Um, they're in it for the love of the dogs. And so are we. It's the only thing that gets you up in the morning. You know, you can come in, you can be really like cheesed off and fed up. Then you look at the dogs jumping up the doors, wagging their tails, and it just makes you smile. Uh, and it's things like that that you, you do it for because you just love the dogs. The dogs are so straight. It's probably one of the straightest gambling things going. Um, you'll get one bad one, I expect, as I said, but they're very genuine trainers and you know the main thing is you want to see the dogs run and run well but when them dogs go in the boxes that's it it's down to lady luck sort of thing don't matter how fit the dog can be and how good a chance it's got if it stumbles out the box if it misses a break or it gets knocked at the bend that's it it's gone uh, we don't ever mess about with dogs i can honestly say i could take a lie detector test we have never ever like the word is stopped a dog we wouldn't know how to do it but we get tired, everyone gets tired with it, everyone thinks it's all crooked and as I said earlier when we were talking that if it was that easy to cheat and mess about with dogs and continuously stop them and back the winners we wouldn't be doing it, we'd have retired and be living in Barbados 20 years ago, you know, it's just if it's that easy, it's not that easy. Changed a lot the game now, it was very very Lots of people used to go to the dogs. It's sort of quietened down a lot now. It's not been helped because of the, uh, the television and the coverage on the internet. People tend to sort of now stay at home and watch it on their phones. It's very high tech, but that's the way it is. You can bet on phones and you, people don't sort of go to the track as much as they used to do, which is very sad. Uh, and the problem is it affects the amount of owners now that are coming into the game because if people are not going there, they're not interested in the dogs uh, and therefore they just don't seem to sort of want to be buying dogs. Uh, and a lot of owners that used to go for the social side don't go now and it's gone downhill, sadly. Uh, Wimbledon closes, I would imagine it would be gone after Christmas and that's the last track in London 
Uh, there were probably, top of my head, 12, 14 tracks when I first started, and that's back in 66, and now there's going to be none. It's changed because of betting shots and because of bookmakers. They've just not sort of, uh, they take plenty out and uh, it's all gone downhill since then. Uh, and internet betting, without a doubt, that's what's sort of ruined the game at the moment. And coverage on the television is now, Racing Post TV I think is six nights a week. Uh, and I've got owners now that have dogs running at Hove and they will turn around and say, well, we're not coming tonight, we're going to watch it on the television. And because they don't come and they lose the social side of meeting up and having a drink in the bar, when the dogs sort of finish racing, they just think, oh, I don't really want to have another one. I don't go down the track anymore. So it's another owner gone. I don't think it encourages a great deal of people into the game. I mean, people haven't rung me up and said, oh, you know, we watched Racing Post TV the other night and it's great, I want to have a dog. It's never happened. It's been on about three or four years. No one's ever rung me up. They try and tell you that it does on the television. They go, oh, it, you know, people are really interested because of the coverage on television, but that's done for bookmakers so they can get people to bet. They're making plenty of money out of it. Um, and for, unfortunately, they just don't put enough in. Uh, some, some, some bookmakers, actually, the big bookmakers, do put money back in, which goes to the, uh, the Greyhound Fund to share out for prize money and... Uh, retired grounds and all that, but some of these other bookmakers don't do it. They just don't put nothing back in. They're taking plenty out and put nothing back in, but they're using it to uh, show into the betting shops and it's costing them basically nothing. Uh, and it's, it's, it's ridiculous that they can just get away with it. I think the future for the sport is gonna be not good. It, it's gone downhill and, uh, and the way that the people that run it, the uh, GBGB, I don't think they help the sport in any way. Uh, they just seem to sit back and just let things collapse and they're all earning probably good money and uh, don't seem to have the sport at heart to me. They just don't listen to people. I think there's a lot of people, a lot of trainers, uh, not just me, but a lot of more intelligent trainers that could sort of help the sport, but they don't really want to listen to anybody. It's just, well, we're going to do it this way and that's it. And uh, they're not really doing any good for the sport and it's going downhill and... I just don't see you know, how it's going to be in five years' time. I feel sorry for the, the kids that are in the game because when I come into it, as I said, I had a chance of getting a trainer's licence because there was lots of tracks, so there was always a chance. But nowadays, it's, it's just not happening. With less tracks, they have less trainers, and the kids really haven't got... It's not the sport. If I had a son or a daughter and they said, oh, I want to come into the game, it wouldn't be advisable. I'd just say, no, you know, do something else.